when you think about the the uh, students and are there any sort of like specifics that like like things that like you have about uh, concerns like not even I know that that we talked earlier about the uh I'll, I'll, maybe what to do if students don't uh do any work or don't want to do any work but are are there any specific like things that you want to have say as like concerns that you have in the what do you mean by buy in oh so like how to how to get them to uh how to get them to um to um uh how do i say it actually um uh like how to get them to um not like not to give pushback if they about about um a, like uh, well, I don't actually know how I would describe buy-in because it's like one of these. I'm going to look it up because I actually I don't know how I would. Oh yeah, okay. That this is a better definition than what I was going to yeah. say. So mm -hmm. buy-in is like the uh, acceptance and willingness to participate in in something so like mm -hmm. acceptance and willingness to participate in the in the class mm -hmm. so so oh the class and the ibl methods because i i think that that's the important part because a lot of these ibl methods the the students just are are used to like how how do you fight things about like what to do when students say um things like why aren't aren't you teaching me or why aren't why aren't you giving me the answers right <laughs> because I, I, I feel like i've heard I type those something can you see what i typed no Hmm. No, that's weird. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can. Huh. Yeah, I don't know because I can. I don't see where did you type it? Uh, where? What part of the screen? And uh... the one that you answer here. <laughs> oh, 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 not there. Like, oh, on the. On these, on, the, oh, on those, yes, and yeah. this because I have to show that part. Yeah, all right. Not having the confidence. So how how am okay. I to write in there uh, in your slide? I don't think I can do that. Oh well, it's okay. I can move all yeah. of these mm -hmm. so that we can have it on this screen then. So, are, are there any other things like uh, oh, so concerns about not uh, students not having the confidence. Um, so maybe just the, the, like, like how to, to overcome students. Yeah. They, uh, sometimes they don't have the confidence to just say whatever they have in mind because they feel like they are being judged and yep. they do not want to say anything if they are not. 100% sure that they have the correct answer. So always right, have so to remind them that we are learning from that. the mistakes. So it's okay to make mistake and. Yeah, so yeah, so just how to get students to realize it's okay to make mistakes. And then I, I think that uh one thing is just the like just the 
and that's all of the fixed the fixed mindset versus like growth mindset issue like does the student have the the mindset of wanting to to improve or or not so i think that's exactly it so let me i'm gonna save this actually because i i know that i've been saving all of these so let me clear this and then go back because uh this is my issue because I always hit the wrong button. But so then I I think that the concerns I I've heard from people are the revolt of the students or what if like students decide to drop because they don't like the way the course is run or or things like that. And so the instructor sometimes like is worried about the immediate consequences to to them. And so then. This is actually the the diagram that I really like to show the the struggles that instructors have to face in terms of of overcoming all these concerns with the students. And the math anxiety is just the tip of the iceberg. And then these are all the other things here stereotype threats faster smarter only geniuses can understand but mistakes are bad so these are all of the things that I, I think that we've heard student at least one student say that they've um, struggled with in the past or something that has caused them to not be successful in their their classes and so uh, how do we how do we overcome those things so that's what this is about today so um so i guess uh and uh you want to go through there's actually three scenarios and so I, we can go through them together, but I guess I'll, I'll give you a minute or so to read them. And then when you uh, think of something, then just uh, let me know. But I probably would like to say that I, ha I have, I, I have taught you something. You just didn't realize that you were actually learning there. I yeah. Tried, I tried to introduce you to critical thinking, and you are already practicing it. Only you just do not realize it because I'm not feeding you up with that. But you are coming out on your own yeah so uh, so I, I think that that's that's good like in general maybe yeah uh, I, I like that and to like point like just point out to students um, like point out to students uh, what is it point out to students uh, the successes that they've already had uh, throughout the uh, class in the semester. I think that's actually good. And that, that's very good. And then... And this has reminded me one time I gave a students a problem and i asked them to work on that 
by themselves in the sense that they can talk to each other, but I'm not going to help them. And then they got the answer correctly, right? And then one student said that, oh, turn not I was better than I thought because I could solve this without your help. And I said, yeah, because you are forced now to listen to you instead of to me, and then you can find your answer. So. Yep, I, yeah. <clears throat> and I, I think that uh, one thing to specifically address the like the ever since elementary school thing that I I usually tell students to do and I, I tell every student to do this. I tell the tell students to think of a time in your past that you like math and um or or had a success in math uh, and uh it, and just think of it and think of it as a like a happy moment you know like a, a happy math happy math moment you know and 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 i found that uh, like students really like really mm -hmm. like that because like for me that moment is like when my my grandmother taught me about um like fractions at her kitchen table by cutting up a piece of fruit you know and so i i think that everyone has that moment that they had as a happy moment but they have to have the the initial um that initial moment in their mind in order to to be able to move past some of that other uh, that other barrier so um do you have anything else Enda? i i never thought i never like to talk about like i'm i have been bad at math since elementary school or something like that because i know that some people were unlucky enough to have teachers that are not good in math and that's why that bad experience made them feel that way so I try not to talk about it and I always said okay but you are here now at the present so forget about everything that you have learned and just start newly from here forget about your hatred or your dislike of math or your bad experience and just look as a freshman yeah so i i i realized that that there's that can i i, I sometimes i do that depending on how the student i think the student will respond yeah but i've also realized for some students like not like uh like acknowledging like hey like oh you really did have a bad math teacher in the past like sometimes if i like i i can get them to talk about it then i can be like well you know what like when we get to that section i'm not going to show that method of doing things i'm going to show you something new a different way of doing it. And so that's the only reason why I, I found like good reasons to like drag that out of them is so that like, if there's a method that they were taught in their past that they really struggle with, then I'm like, well, I'm not going to sh show you that way. I'm going to show you something different. And like you said, and to like, just hope you like start brand new and, uh, and then move forward from here. So th that's good. Um, let's let me clear these then. So this is the the next one. So I'll give you a um, as long as you need to read this one also, and then then uh, whatever you think about it, we'll uh, we, we'll talk about.
actually I have a students like this now, but now she stopped coming to class altogether. So I think she's giving up. Yeah. So uh, what? Mm -hmm. So what? I, the student uh, stops coming to class altogether. Yep, that's a a good uh, thing. Um, maybe to uh, to to at least make sure that we yeah address is something that might come up. I I think that I would. I, I would, you know, like. I did the uh, call, the name in class. What do you think? Do you have any suggestion or do you, do you object what your classmates said? So I'm trying to, to fish something from the students. Yeah, that's good. I, I think that. Uh, something that I I might do is maybe um, just re remind the the student that um, like I I want to help them as best as I can, but uh, but you should you know you should try the the problems for yourself so that uh, that you can do them um independently yeah independently when i'm when i'm not here or or and then i might oh, I, I don't know why i spelled remind incorrectly but i I'll, and then I, I think another thing I might say or that I've done in the past is, um, while, while students are, are working in groups, pull the student aside and ask them some like questions on an individual basis. You know, because sometimes the students might not want to contribute to the entire yeah. like the whole class discussion but they they like will they will do it privately yeah yeah or and then even for that that student if or if the the student is doing some uh, good work on on their paper ask if they uh, they they would be willing to have uh, have their work shared with the uh, like even if it's like anonymously with the class so that at, at least then th that it's acknowledged that the they then at least it's acknowledged that they were doing the work and then that could count as their participation in class that they contribute it something to the class discussion that, that the students could talk about even if the person wasn't um talking out loud so i guess a better way might be to like give give students the an opportunity to participate in class in a non-verbal way like just by showing their work or it, rather than like having to talk about it. Yeah. Really? Participating doesn't mean you have to talk, right? If if you cannot have the access to the audio, I mean, you can always write your answers and it could be done to everybody or privately. And then I can say that one of your classmates is having this answer, blah, 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 and the rest can see that. Yeah. And also offering like extra points for participating in discussion. Oh yeah, like I, I think that that's yeah. like, I, I, I think that that's like one of these things where I, I like uh, all of those like 
ideas like in terms of especially like just making sure that like uh, that I, because I, I think that students sometimes they they don't they might not want to participate because they don't realize that that there are ways to uh, participate without having to talk like they think that when we're asking them to participate that we really want them to talk and sometimes that's not always the case like sometimes yeah. it's just like mm-hmm. you know anything you can contribute is there anything else you want to say or are you like nodding your head or like or like agreeing or can you give me a, a, a any reaction at all then those are things that I always like um think and about sometimes right. I try to solve a problem but I solve it incorrectly yeah I pretended that it was correct and I waited for somebody to tell me that it's incorrect yeah I I like that technique also like like what is the error I I, I do a lot of those actually I I put those on tests sometimes too instead of a test like a regular test question I just I tell them things like uh, this is how a, a student did this in the past like can you find the error and uh, things yeah, like that. Yeah, I did that and the students all answer. Everybody have the same answer. There is nothing wrong there. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that, that's, yeah, that's always yeah. A, a, mm-hmm. yeah, a possibility, unfortunately. But I'd say that um, the, these are the, some of the things that are, are given as strategies to what the AIBL workshops have, I want to have called melting the iceberg or like getting rid of these underlying issues that might cause a student not to be as successful in a class. So these are some strategies like using starter problems, coaching, creating positive learning environments, using reading assignments and reflective writing, and then tailoring the assessments and aligning them to the uh, learning goals. So I'll, I, I guess I'll, I'll go through all of these uh, one by, by one and then, and then uh, have you add to the list and we, we can talk about them and then then go from there. So starter problems are are just when we we think of those, we want to focus on the fact that we want the like problems not to be too difficult that that not every student can uh, do them. And then remember that the instructor's role is to design the task. Uh, the order of the task and the pacing and of course in the long run we want to have problems that are at the right level for all students and that might be varying levels of difficulty it's okay to give answers or hints sometimes when a student is truly stuck or if we feel like they really need that that helping hand and then uh, like there's no never too easy of a question because students always have to like have that initial confidence that they were able to do a problem successfully. So, um, what are you, like, are your comments on, on this and or, or questions or concerns or do you have any like specific like starter problems that you like to use in your your classes? I cannot think of it, honey. But yeah, I did that, and usually the one that talks much is the one that that is always active, and then then the rest would just listen. So yeah, so I I think that that's where my like what I one thing that I I like to do for starter problems is 
like show a a picture of a, like something that is relevant to the 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 topic and so uh, if i i go I, let me see if i can bring it back up because i i know that i i i had it up earlier and then i i didn't say it, anything about it at the earlier uh, at the time because i i knew we weren't on this part yet but oh there it was i anyway i'll wait for it it's the visual thinking techniques or visual thinking strategies and so i i will take pictures that i've taken myself and then ask the students as a opening to a, a lesson like what do you see in the pictures and then this particular one was taken at Dodger Stadium in LA and then it it actually the, the reason why I, I I put it in the chapter that it's in is because Dodger Stadium is right down the middle symmetric like uh, and so then they even have a scoreboard in left field and a same size scoreboard in right field. They have a Waffle House even in the left field and a Waffle House in right field. <laughs> so it's symmetric right down the middle. So I put it right in the section when I'm going to talk about like symmetry and, and even in odd functions. And then the, somebody always talks about the parabolas or or somebody mentions the shadow i usually have a have some students asking about what time of year it was taken or or what time of day it was taken and you know what like i'm okay with those types of questions also also because as a chapter opener there wasn't a right or a wrong answer it was just like what do you see in this and my hope is that at least one student will say like symmetry so that I can use it as a place to start talking about symmetry. But I do make every student say something or every group say something about the picture. And so I have a whole lot of pictures that I, I took. It, they're all on my website, actually, because I, I went to like a whole bunch of like math museums and workshops to try to get like pictures of things that that people actually this is not the best example because I, I know that there are more pictures and oh but there is one though that I, I think is interesting because it's um it's of the golden spiral and so at the Dolly Museum, there is, is actually where is it? Because I, I know exactly where it's at. And yeah, so on the on the like uh like garden walkway and by the museum, the 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 spiral is in the pavement. And so I I sort of like when I'm talking about the Fibonacci sequence or anything like that, I I bring up this picture as a discussion starter and ask the students like, what, you know, do you see anything here? And so I found that these are, are very, very low stakes questions. And because they relate to everyday life, since they're, they're pictures I've taken myself that, you know, students like that, I guess. So, mm -hmm. um, so do you have anything else to add and, not at this time. All right. Yeah. And it, in any case, like if you uh, ever want to uh, use any of the uh, the pictures, uh, feel uh, free to. And and I can give you other suggestions of where to get pictures also, because I I know if you go to the uh, like the S Smithsonian website they have galleries of just math objects that, that you can use and as discussion starters and things like that so uh, the next thing is the coaching 
So this is just like remembering that it's not cheerleading. And what we I say as instructors really does have an impact trying to get the the students to to uh, show show you what they tried rather than just saying, well, you know, like try again, go and figure it out. Like, well, show me what you've already tried. Um, because students will expect us to be responsive to them when they ask uh, for help, but that doesn't mean that we have to do the work for them. So we just have to do all of these things as a coach, like listen, guide, advise, uh, give hints, give praise for persistence and experimentation. And so there's like a general outline of, of what you could say in terms of, uh, of like coaching students and, and helping them uh, along, like reminding them again that, that being stuck is okay and that your job is to do the thinking, like you said, into like the, the critical thinking is important to, to stress to the students. And then just uh, another thing that, that students actually like sort of, uh, respond to sometimes really well is you know like just good good question like I I want to help you as best as I can and so can you show me what you tried first so that uh, we have something to start with and we can go from there or, um, or or can you give me some ideas of of how you're going to do better in the future at this that this topic and uh, what are some things that you know you should practice and let's make a list together so what are some maybe techniques or strategies or things that that you say to your your students and uh, sometimes if they have a uh, well if they are stuck somewhere then i will say do you still remember what the goal here is Okay, so what do you think in the next step for that goal? Let's say they are trying to solve an equation. Okay, what is the aim when we are solving equation? Okay, isolate the variable. So how do we do that? And then they usually try to do something. And even though when their suggestion is incorrect, I try to follow it and then they will see that, oh, that wasn't good. And then, okay, it's not working. So that must be something wrong here. Let's go back and see what happened. So sometimes I I like them better when they make mistake because then it will, it will stick with them more if you are making mistake at the first time, right? So. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Like I, I, I think, um, let me see, I was going to like, list a couple of other ones here that that, um, that might be good things that, that uh oh, I, yeah, I was trying to, but all of a sudden, like my, oh, there it was, my file became very hard to, to read, and I wasn't sure why why it uh was this way so yeah i i think uh another thing that might be good is like just start the the coaching from the the first day and so uh just uh you know, start and from also, day if one students ask for a hint it is good if we can offer it to another student. Okay, class, what do you think? Can anybody help give a hint? So yeah, we, are, we wait until everybody are giving up or stuck before we really. Uh, 
has a a hint to share yeah i think that's great and actually i i think that's uh like helps the the students realize that they're they're all in it you know they're all in it together so that's that community building i i think that there's a lot of ways to go about the the um the first day of class activities but mm -hmm. one activity that has sometimes gone uh, really well in terms of of uh, being the coach and it, it so as a coach you you have to a lot of times like uh, remind the students that the the um that practice is important because I, I don't think that's really in here yet. Like that it wasn't captured on here yet that about the practice piece is the coach, you know, and so an activity for day one could be have students talk to each uh, other about a hobby and how they, became good at it and uh, how how practice was required to do so so if you can relate the idea of that that they have to practice right back to uh, um, also having to practice for a math class then i i think that they sometimes are are more willing to be open to the idea of I have to practice, I have to get the answer on my own, and then uh, just you know always always em emphasize that growth uh, mindset. So continue to to emphasize, uh, and I, I can't spell, so I don't I don't think I can spell that today uh, <laughs> I, I I'm telling you like uh, to uh, rem so just continue to remind students about about growth mindset so so you know like I I think that these are all good and, uh, and I, I think that the the key sometimes I think is the more we can do toward the beginning of the semester the better and I, I think that it is easy to have the class go off track but when it goes off track it, it's hard to get back and so yeah. mm -hmm. now I'll tell you that I'll admit that I had one class this semester that I thought was going to go off track and it did at first and the way I brought them back is through those self-assessments because I start reading their self-assessments after the first couple of weeks. And then when I, I start reading them, I'm like, well, you know what? Like, uh, I see what they're like, what they're telling me and what they're learning and what they're struggling with. And so I started like tailoring the the lectures to the things that they were struggling with and the like the application problems that they wanted to hear about and so I feel like then they started uh, paying attention a little bit more because they realized hey I'm not just doing the sticking to the script of the handout and then when they were hearing things that they wanted to know about then uh, they, they were <clears throat> like they, they actually have been more willing to uh, like do the other work on on their own outside of class without me even telling them because I I told them well you know what uh, we've already talked about this topic so I'm not covering these pages in the handouts but we did cover it and you have to uh, review review the, the notes and apply it to finish filling out the handouts on your own or you have to watch the videos uh, online or 
or uh, work through it with your group members. And so I, I realize that one of the things that has helped is just to be flexible. And if I, I did like get the group to come back together when I realized, you know what, like the handouts just aren't going to work for this group. So I'm going to try something different and then it worked. So, uh, so I, I think that this is an interesting phrase here though, is instead of like sage on the stage or guide on the side, like the, the term mentor in the middle. And so just trying to be a, that coach or mentor to the, to the students in the small groups and then realizing that, well, you might not be talking or giving direct instruction as much later on in the term, which like I, I said, like even with the differential equation students, I had them do the presentations earlier this week and they did the presentations and I didn't do a single thing and they were encouraging each other in the chat. And I, you know, I was thoroughly impressed. And so uh, visit the groups to see how they're thinking and how they learn. And again, that there's that flexibility um, component in there in adjusting the lessons throughout the semester, encouraging that productive struggle or the idea that mistakes are okay and in, in allowing students to develop the ideas on their own, but giving them the time to think about it. And so I, I do think that that time of, of here's that minute to even think before you go to your small groups is helpful. Like even with the cahoots, I, I give the students the problems in advance and then they have time to work on them individually or as a, in a small group. And then we do the cahoot together so that I know that all the students have had time to think about the problems before I just say, here, time to enter the answer. And then <clears throat> like the other strategy, like when I say encourage groups to be active when, uh, when asked, like I, I, I will walk over, over to quiet groups and remind them about the task to talk about a, a certain problem. And then maybe uh, after, after groups have shared out, encourage, um, encourage like, like students to, to like, give a give a like I usually say a round of applause or like or like whatever it is to to just let the students know that their their work was a or work was appreciated in the class so let students know each other's work is appreciated in the class or and 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 ideas, not just the work, but th their ideas and thoughts. And then, uh, where was it? Yeah, when you visit the, the groups, maybe just ask uh, quiet students, quiet students in a, in a group, uh, can you show me what you tried or can you share that great idea with your group members? So um, what are some things that, that you do, Inda, that would help with this uh, positive learning environment? I'm doing it. I'm just trying. Oh. <laughs> when, you, when you are asked like this, I've tried to remember what I did in class. Where somehow I just couldn't remember, but it's similar to what you have. 
Yeah, I think that it's yeah. Um, so when when we when we were still on ground, I walk a lot to my students, and mm-hmm. that's something that we are not going to do sooner, right? Even when we are going back to ground, I don't think I will walk around and face my students in a close proximity. So, but usually they are more open up when they feel that they can talk with us without anybody else listening. So not to the whole class. So a personal personal connection is important for them. Yeah. Um, without being like uh, without being in front of yeah. the whole the whole class and the and the personal connection is important. Yes, absolutely. And so so th- this is actually the the goes along with that yeah that importance of of like visiting the group so <clears throat> so i i think that there's still that way to um to do that sometimes like i i know that i i do know some people who are teaching on campus at other colleges and they they have the students keep their distance, but they have the students like have a whiteboard, a small whiteboard, and they hold their answers up mm-hmm. so that this, the instructor doesn't have to get as close. So, yeah. so they have students hold up answers on whiteboards, or maybe I think another thing is the like allow some some chances for maybe anonymous feedback so that it's sort of well let's just take a quick anonymous poll or like of do you think yes or no and that could be done in a kahoot or something where yeah, where uh, students, clicker yeah mm-hmm. so i think that those are all really good things and i feel like that might be one of the strategies that I use when we go back to campuses, still using some of these on uh, on the technology components in class, because I don't want to get as close to them, but I do want them to be able to uh, still, still like have the opportunity to be open and talk with me. And so right now, like I, I was trying to get at earlier is, that I, I do ask students be, the first few minutes of class, like, how are you doing? And some of them actually will put in the chat with a direct message, the same sort of things like I, I would get in an in-person class, like, hey, like I have to leave early, leave the Zoom class early today because I have to go to, to, like pick somebody up or, or I have to go do this or uh, things that a student would come up to me before class and usually tell me or in those breakout rooms like I said they'll be talking about their chemistry class or physics class and if they get off topic at least they feel like uh, it's a safe environment to do that in and so I don't really um, I don't really like think that it will be too big of a problem to do this when we go back to campus but I I think it will have to be done differently so well, of course it will be. So uh, let's see. And so. we have to think about students that are introvert as well, because they are really struggling if they are put on the spot. So that's something that we have to be able to recognize, not to make students that are introvert to be like a center of an attention, because they are not going to feel safe in that kind of and, and actually, Enda, that was a like a great thing for this slide. So the, the uh, be aware of introverts in the class. So the the reading assignments and and uh, reflective writing are are good for these students because 
it, it gives them the time to to think about the like what they've read and reflect without the the um, like what it says here actually without the being in the public class setting so i think the uh, uh, these these uh, allow for some for some anonymous uh, feed like uh, feedback because not all students are, because um, the ideas don't don't have to be shared with all students. It's just between the the instructor and the the student who is writing it, unless the the student agrees to to have the work shared. But but like sometimes having reading assignments or re reflective writing uh, assignments outside of class are are good things because the attitudes and beliefs that we have are are as it says here like like very deep inside of us or deep within us and so those are all of those like past experiences of of the elementary school teacher who did something bad or whatever that might cause us to uh, or anyone to maybe not want to speak up in class so um, some readings that could be assigned are about problem solving and productive failure or assigning a, a student to write a math autobiography about their math story and writing about examples of productive failure that they've had in class or uh, watching videos on productive failures and writing some things that they uh, learned or or just just some open times to write and read individually so uh, like I, I know that I, I did this in a small way by, by, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, asking students to read and then reflect on a theorem or definition, or reflect in a weekly self-assessment. And so, what are some like sort of maybe reading or assignments or reflective writing assignments that you've used and or questions or, or comments you have about this sort of uh, method in a class? I usually just give them a problem that is incorrect and they have to write or I ask them to explain Okay, let's say that we are going to solve this problem. I do not want you to solve this problem, but I would like you to write down how are you going to explain how to solve this problem to your classmates. So or that's kind of thing. Explain a problem without solving it. Yeah. Yeah, like, and actually I did that with my differential equations class uh, for homework. Like one of the homework assignments is this weekend, actually, uh, it, we, we were talking about solutions of differential equation by substitutions. And, and I, I hate how all of the problems in the book have, um, I like guess it gives a suggested substitution, like let u equal t minus one or, and so I, I gave them some homework problems. And I said, all right, here's the, the equation. And then I want you to pick a substitution, like come up with a substitution and explain why you picked it. And I didn't actually tell them what the substitution was. I, did, I told them not to solve it. I just said, I want you to come up with a good substitution on your own and explain why you picked it. So I think that's great. And uh, like mm -hmm. I, yeah, um, I know that, <clears throat> that, um, Let's see, like there are lots of things that that go along with the the reflective right. I, I was thinking about when other what other times I've used reading assignments in 
reflective writing assignments in a class, I think that it could be even something as simple as ask students to, to write down what they, they learned or a question or a concern they had as an exit ticket from, from class, you know, like just ask them to reflect like really quickly before the end of the class, like write down what your biggest takeaway from the class was, or if there's something that you didn't understand, uh, just write it down. And then I've also, I've, I've had students a, do the, create the library fair poster projects about about a, a like either a famous mathematician or a, a, a topic in the class etc or a, like a one was innovation in mathematics and they had to just they just had to pick something that would would connect the mathematics and from the class to their everyday life and that was the reflective piece. Like if they could make the connection of how they, how they were connecting what we learned in class to everyday life, then that's all I wanted. So uh, make connections between in class learning and everyday, everyday life. So these are all things where I, I think that it, it helps. All right, let's go on to the the next one then now i i'll say that this is the last like piece of that like melting the iceberg diagram and then it's the a lot of things we've already already uh, already mentioned like taking off points from mistakes is inconsistent with our message uh, grading homework for process and effort but but not necessarily accuracy having some ungraded assignments and then uh, now when I say ungraded assignments that like that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have to so doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have to do it because I, I do know that, that I do for some of my classes, like consider this like requiring an 80% or higher on a, an in ungraded practice quiz before the quiz can be taken and so now i'll tell you that my strategy this semester is actually went a one step farther than that end of what i i've now have done is i've also said uh, I've, I've done require a, a like 100 percent on a practice quiz before a, a student can retake a, a quiz. So I've actually have decided that if a student wants to try to retake a quiz, I, I, I'll, I, I really want them to, but I, I want them to like show me that they're not going to like do something to show me they're not going to make the same mistakes as as the first time they took the quiz and that's by doing the 100 percent of the practice quiz and i'll tell you that this semester i had one lady she did the practice assignment like uh, uh, in my open math she did the practice assignment like one problem she did 100 attempts at it and i never thought that a student would get to 100 attempts 
and not get a question right. But she did that <laughs> one problem 100 times. And then she emailed me and said, so w- will you still let me retake the, the quiz, even though I didn't get 100% on the practice quiz? And I said, absolutely not. I said, you know, like, I'll give you more time, like another attempt on the, on the practice quiz quiz even but before you submit this last attempt i really want you to think about your your answer and check it with me and i i realized that she was not like writing down her work on a piece of paper and so she was misreading the problem every single mm-hmm. time now the fact that she did it 100 times i i also i never would have imagined that but but it, it's one of these things where, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not requiring the practice quiz, but if you want. But her yeah. grade is really good. She was trying 100 times. <laughs> so it's, it's, well, for me, I will give her point for doing 100 times because that means she's really trying or yeah. not. I yeah, don't. well, that's the thing. Like, I, 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 I didn't want. Like, I, I, I really wanted the student to, like, realize that, like, I, I didn't really care about, like, if she, even if, if she would have actually explained the problem to me correctly, but then I would have realized that she had entered the answer incorrectly 100 times, then I would have felt differently. But then she, she, uh, told me what she put and then I realized she wasn't showing her work and that's what the issue was so yeah uh, so I I think that the idea of reading and writing about productive failure and and making sure that we align the assessments to the learning outcomes that we value the most is very important and so I I really don't cover as many topics like in class anymore I cover interesting things in class like applications and give them a chance to work uh, on their own or in groups and then I let them sort of uh, discover the rest of it on their their own and I've realized that the more interesting I make the actual class sessions, the, the they just t- decide they want to show up for the most part on their own. And I, I, I don't follow, I have the handouts, but I don't follow them very strictly anymore. So I guess that's my um, biggest sort of. Uh, but what if you cannot finish with, all the materials because if we have a department final exam the students have to be able to learn the whole thing right if we allow them to study by themselves and not checking them and then turn out that they are only good in the things that we discuss in class but not really with the others then what will happen to them so this is actually the thing that i I'll say that I, I will say is probably the most important part to me is align assessments to the learning outcomes you value. So I'll, I'll give you my tip and it's that I know that I talk a lot in class and I, I know I talk too much probably. And I know that if I didn't talk as much that, that I would have more time for group work or cover more material or whatever it is. But I usually reserve the last two weeks of class for things that I know I need to cover, but um, I don't care. I don't care as much about them or it, or things I know I need to cover that are on the final exam and I, I ran out of time for a, a certain topic or whatever it is. And so in those last week and a half, two weeks, I go through the, the practice final exam 
and I, I I do so I do two things. One is I I like about four weeks or so before the final exam, I give the the students a the like worked out solutions to the practice final exam and i i tell them it it's i'll even i can even show you one of them and uh, because i i know that the uh i don't actually wait a second where is it because i i know that it is right i have it right here and it, it's one of these things where um <clears throat> excuse me um where I, I, I just flat out tell the students, hey, like, I, I might not get to everything. So if there's something on this final exam review that you think that I, I haven't covered that you can't figure out on your own from, from reading through these solutions and trying to figure out this concept on your own, then ask me during these final two weeks or if it's a problem where i i know that it's a topic i need to cover and i ran out of time on i'll just do all of that like like four or five problems for them in class and give them a mini lecture on the topic rather than a a, a full lecture because my thought is i i don't like the idea of necessarily uh, teaching to a test mm -hmm. but at, at the same time like if it's only for one or two topics and they they have a a solid understanding of everything else then a year from now they probably will have forgotten most of the lectures anyway and if they have that like like a the deeper understanding that will never go away so i i I just start focusing on the deeper understanding and saying like, Hey, like, because of all this, this critical thinking that we've been building in class, uh, you, you, you are able to look at these solutions and piece together things that we haven't talked to get about together in class or went over in class on your own without my help. Like you don't need my help to, to do this because you 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 know how to do these things because it's just an extension of of uh, like what what you've already done so i i guess that's where i'm at now and is just mm -hmm. like i i would rather like teach to the test on one or two problems like like or one or two topics even than then um oh here here's what i'm looking for actually but this is sort of what oh i don't actually know if i i'm gonna clear all of this then like oh i have it so that that the students don't like get a thorough or deeper understanding but like all of these are for the college algebra or math 14, 15 final uh, practice. And, and it has all of the, the steps like worked out. And, and honestly, the reason why I typed them out or had them I, typed out is because then if the final, like if the practice final changes, it's usually just one or two problems or a certain number all right, like in, then I can renumber them electronically without having to rewrite the whole document every semester, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I just match up when the new final review uh, comes out, I match up with the previous semesters and then I just uh, add in the, the new problems or I, if there's a problem the previous semester where I, I realize that there's a topic where the students didn't do well on the final exam, then I add extra explanation to my my uh, final review handout. So I I have that as like this back of my pocket sort of strategy that I I 
like I said, I feel so bad sometimes about teaching to the test. But at the same time, I've also realized that in the last couple of weeks of every semester, like the students are like they have papers due for their English class, papers due for their their uh, like psychology class, papers due for this and that and that. And they're not focused on learning like a, like a lot of new material anyway. And so then if I'm giving them many lectures on like targeted topics that we haven't covered or we didn't go in depth as much on, then that's easier for them to digest when they're already so busy anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I, I feel like that, that really, really helped. Um, and so I, I, I know, like I said, that this isn't the, the best uh, strategy, but I, I think that it, it can be, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's something to consider. Like, I, I'll, I'll say, like I said, I don't, I, like, because specifically for us, since we, we have that curve or the scaling on the final exams anyway, like the departmental finals, if, if a student misses one problem, I, I'm not, I'm not too concerned anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. because they, they're going to get that scaling factor of the curve anyway. And so if there's one thing where they had a gap on, but they, like they, they learn critical thinking skills and they, they learned enough that they can like, or it, it, like take this, a positive attitude about math to their next class then that's what I really want. So yeah. like if they have a positive attitude about math when they've left my class, because they've, they've gotten excited about polling questions or they've uh, like won at Jeopardy or at a Kahoot, or they uh, like were able to help a group member with, with something, then I tell the, the, the students from day one, like these are the things that are, are, like, are going to make you feel better about yourselves and, and also uh, going to help you to grow and, and learn and, and then take skills that uh, you can use in other math classes and in your future career. So that's, that's I guess, it. Um, well, do you have anything to add, Enda? Uh, yeah, I like this. If we can have that freedom, I mean, like not finishing everything, and uh, as long as they are learning something, it will be a good thing. I just sometimes feel like I have to make sure that I finish the whole thing, otherwise I'll be in trouble. So. Yeah, yeah I mean that's what I mean. Like I, mm -hmm. like I, I if. That's why, like, I, I really do save, like, that last, like, couple of, like, week and a half, two weeks to, like, fill in any gaps I may have, yeah. mm -hmm. I may have not had time to cover or, or uh, didn't cover as well or whatever it is, like, it, it really is, uh, that's why I'm always so much farther behind schedule than yeah. any other instructor because you always do yeah <laughs> yeah I'm always behind schedule but I always finish everything and that's why because like most I, I'm finishing like at least like 20 like like the last like 20 percent in the last like two three weeks because like it it's not like an even split I I go very very slow in the beginning because I I go over like the definitions for weeks, like two, three weeks or four weeks if needed, because I, I feel like um, uh, that's the only way to put the students on the even playing field, because there, there's some students who come into the class, they don't have the, the prerequisite knowledge, they don't have the 
like the vocabulary skills they need. And so I don't want to mismatch the groups with one person too high and too low of a level and they can't really collaborate as well as I would like them to. And so I start out with tasks at the beginning that are, are sort of um, like everyone can read the, the definitions together and tell us what you think it means. And you don't have to be right at this point because we'll learn what it means together, but not today. Today, I just want to know what do you think it means? And then we'll talk later about what it means. And, and so I, I spread that sort of thing out a lot because I, I, I want to, I guess, just make sure that they, they um, all know that, that I'll, I'll slow down for them. I'll take the time for them. But as I'm doing this, though, like if there's a word that a student really doesn't know, and I, I de if I decide that I'm, I'm going to talk about it in class instead of like pull the student off to the side to explain it to them, then I will add in extra stuff that uh, like uh, that even the strong students in the class might not know about saying like this is another place in a future math class you might take where the same idea might come up or this is the origin of why this word became called the word that it is or this is the person who invented this thing or you know or, or these are some other ways that you could use this concept so that it's it's more than just explaining the word and it, it will help, I guess, um, like be something that will, it will be something that will answer the question that the, the weakest student would, would have, but also give that little extra that a stronger student would want to know about. So, you know, like I, I think that it, there's a fine line, but that's also why I get so far off track. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm.